What's going on y'all, Chuck Nunface here, and today I've got a review on this guy right here. This is the Medford Knife and Tool Infraction. Pretty cool knife, pretty cool knife. It's been around for a while, been around for several years, uh, so it's not exactly one of their newer models, but you know they're always doing a few changes here and there, kind of updating things. Um, so let's kind of go into what this knife is all about. So as you can see, this is an all PVD knife. It is... Uh, uh, that's one of the few things that Medford doesn't do in-house is they don't do their own coating. It's done by a company called Armor Tough, which is right down the road in the Phoenix area. Um, so, yeah, so it's a, a full PVD with standard um, you know, just silver hardware, uncoated. It's got a tumble clip, and it's got your hex hardware and then your proprietary pin right there for the pivot. So... Overall specs on this guy right here, it has a 3.625, very specifically inch blade, with about a three and a quarter inch cutting edge on that one. So outside of the Choi, where the cutting edge starts right there, has an overall length of eight inches. Um, and it weighs about 4.8 ounces. Now they do have some other varieties where they do like a carbon fiber scale. So that's going to obviously cut down on the weight a little bit, but as is, they're about 4.8 ounces. So not too bad. It's a little bit, a little bit of a chunkier knife than, uh, what some people may want, but, um, that's kind of what it is right there. So the blade stock thickness is 0.19. And then the scale thickness is 0.187. So that's pretty standard Medford uh, thickness on, you know, a lot of their knives right there. So that's going to be like the, the H varieties of the Marauder. Um, you're going to have that 0 0.19, 0 0.187 all the way around um, on those. And uh, not the Slim Midi, of course, but the Marauder H and then the, uh, the Midi Marauder are going to be like that. And they've got a couple other models that are like that. As well, this one is riding on Fosper bronze washers. Has external stop fins. They clearly don't. Uh, they don't serve as thumb studs, so it's going to be deployed either using a slow roll on the cutout right there. It does have a flipper tab, so to speak, um, that you can use to open it up, and it doesn't really take a whole lot of risk. But it is a little tricky. I'll get into that in just a minute. And it can also be spidey flicked as well. I don't have a whole lot of uh, success spidey flicking it without some wrist. Um, and I was trying pretty to, to get good at it. And I, I, I'm sure you could, your mileage may vary, but I found the best way really is just doing the thumb flick right there. It's a really great thumb flicker knife. Um, so that's what you're kind of looking at right there. Now going to the flipper tab, it's not really so much a flipper tab. It's really more of a faux flipper tab and it, it runs, you know, flush with the, uh, with the lock face right there as well, or the tang, I should say. So it does have some jimping on it. And really, if you're going to want to open it up, you're not going to be able to do any sort of light switch or anything like that, or clearly not like, you know, just only on the jimping right there. Um, you really kind of have to get up right on the lock face or the tang right there and give it a good hard snap. And this one is not exactly broken in. So this one is on loan from uh, a friend of mine. He sent me a box of knives. I did an unboxing video of it. And um, this was one of the ones that was in there. And so he even said himself, he's like, there's just other things that end up in my pocket. I haven't carried it a whole lot. So, um, you know, it's not really broken in yet. And that's true. It's not broken in. So I've carried it some, um, not, not too much. I've done a little bit with it, but haven't really carried it a whole lot. But yeah, as far as deployment goes, I think it's a great thumb flicker without question. Don't need any wrist or anything like that. So it is a bit of a chunky boy. Uh, that's for sure. It's got a nice backspacer right there. Going to be able to put a lanyard hold in there if you want to. So it's got that little flare or swell. Um, some nice milling right there. Pockets on the show side scale. And then it's got the INF-1, um, which is for infraction. I don't know what the dash one is for exactly, but... And then you've got your, your born on dating, your date code right there. And it's also going to be... Is it on the blade as well? Yes, it's going to be on the blade as well. So... Just to kind of do a little quick recap on the way they do their, their dates. So that first number is the year. So that's going to be, make sure you can see that. That's going to be um, uh, 2020, June 2020. And it was the 15th knife of the run. So that's how they do their date codes. Um, yeah, overall, it's a pretty solid knife. Um, you know what? I just realized I didn't do any size comparisons. So let's do a couple of comparisons right now. There is the Ontario Rat 1. And then, oops, not really in frame there. Move it down a little bit. Ontario Rat 1. And then the 
Spider Co. Stretch 2. This is in, the one is in the K390. So it's right around in the same size as those. This is very similar to a paramilitary 2. So that's kind of the stand in that I have for that right now. Um, so similar blade length. It's going to be probably a little bit closer to the Rat 1 and oh, well. It's going to be a little bit smaller than both, but it's got about the same blade length as both, really, when you get right down to it. Um, there is the Spyderco Native 5, full serrated right there. So that one. And let's see. There is the Slim Midi from Medford Knives. So that's a good one right there to do a size comparison because... If you're in the market for a Medford that's on the smaller size, you might be looking at those two right there. And then a knife that I did a review on just uh, about a week ago is that Medford M48. So these are three knives right here where if you were in the market for a Medford and you didn't want you know, a Praetorian or a, a TFF or something like that, or a full-size Marauder, um, you might be looking for one of these smaller knives that they make um, and... You know, that might be driving your decision-making process right there. So, kind of looking at that, it is going to be thicker than all of those knives. Let's see if I can do kind of a thickness profile right there. So, it's going to be on the thicker side than all of those. So, it's a chunky knife for sure. It's going to have the same overall thickness as like the Mini Marauder would. Um, possibly like the older discontinued colonial, something like that. So yeah, it's definitely not a, a thin little svelte knife, not, not anything like the, the you know, the, uh, this is a DLT exclusive, um, uh, midi, slim midi marauder. So it's going to be a lot thicker. Um, it's going to weigh a little bit more as well, certainly more than the M48, which has that aluminum scale. Um, but that being said, you know, it is still a nice carry knife. It goes in the pocket very well. Nothing wrong with that. It carries well. Um, it might be a little bit too thick, possibly too heavy for your preferences, but it's not something that I really found it to be a problem. Um, I like bigger knives. Um, you know, the only kind of question that I have for this knife, um, well, real quick first, it's got a nice hollow grind like right there, which, which all Medford knives do. They do a nice job on their grinds. And this one came really sharp too. It's almost got like a mirror edge on it right there. So I was impressed with the edge on it. You know, I'm pretty sure that's from the factory. I don't think the owner has touched this up or anything like that. And so it's got a nice, good, sharp factory edge. Um, but I'm kind of struggling to see where this particular knife fits in their lineup nowadays. You know, would they have offerings that are going to be a little bit more EDC friendly, such as the Slim Midi or even possibly the M48, which is going to be a little, you know, a little thinner, a little lighter. And then you've got things like the Praetorian Slim and Swift, where they're going to have the same type of carry profile as these other knives. I'm struggling a little bit to see if this knife is still relevant within their lineup. Um, I think they've got choices with the knives that they offer, particularly with the Mini Marauder, that is going to fill the bill more for the person that doesn't want to carry the, the, the big, the stereotypical Medford that's going to be, you know, that big overbuilt knife, and they want something a little more smaller, a little more pocket friendly, a little more EDC friendly. I struggle a little bit to see where this one is going to fit within the lineup now. Now, there are certainly people that like bigger, thicker, more uh, tanky, uh, as they say, knives. And this might be for them. Um, but I also think maybe a better choice for them might be that Mini Marauder, you know, if they've got an idea for a Medford. Um, so, like I said, I struggle a little bit to see how relevant this knife is all things being equal with what their current catalog is, you know, the, the relevance of this knife within the catalog. Um, I like it. I mean, I think it's good, but I don't know if I would particularly buy it based on, you know, this definitely doesn't really fit, fill a need for me. Um, you know, it might be for you. If you really like the way it looks, this might check a lot of boxes for you. You want something that's a little thicker. You want something that's got a thicker blade stock and everything else. Um, but you want that, you know, three and a half inch, Kind of blade pro, blade size um but you want it to have a little more substance to it and have some multiple options for deployment you know with the uh with the finger flick which i'm sure some people can do better the thumb deployment and then of course also the flipper tab um 
So, I mean, it's definitely a good knife. And just as a side note as well, you know, I think the value prop on this knife is a little bit higher than this. They're approximately in the same pricing category. So if you watch the other uh, video I did on this one right here, I believe this one goes as configured for $550. And then this is going to be in a similar pricing structure. I think they go from somewhere between $550 and and. 600 from the starting range and everything else. So I do think based on materials, um, you know, this being titanium on both sides, you know, they both have S35VN. I don't know if they missed that. That S right there is for S35VN. Um, they both have the same steel. Um, you know, this one has a thicker blade stock. This one is longer. This one is lighter. This one is heavier. This is kind of thicker all the way around. This is thinner. This has titanium on both sides with a backspacer. This has titanium on the spring side and then an aluminum uh, presentation side. I think the value prop overall is a little bit higher on this knife than it is on this knife, all things being equal. But I'm not going to go digress. I already kind of did that in my last video. So um, in any case, kind of wrap things up. Um, the infraction is a good knife. I mean, I like it. I, I wouldn't be opposed to owning a knife like this or anything else. The ergos are great on it. feels good in a traditional grip. That choil is very usable. Um, you can definitely choke up on it. However, real quick, that is a little sharp if you've got your finger in there. That um, Those lock, lock cutouts uh, for the external stop pins, they're a little bit on the sharp side. So that's going to be a little bothersome if you are using that choil and actually doing it for work. But... In any case, you know, the Ergos, besides that, they're not bad at all. Feels good in, in all of your traditional grips. It lacks um, any sort of jimping on the side, which I know a lot of people are going to be happy about. A lot of people out there don't like jimping. Um, and then, um, you know, it's got good lock bar tension as well. Nothing really to complain about there. Uh, the newer ones, they may have a lock bar stabilizer in there. I'm not sure, an over travel stop. Um, but I don't know. Maybe they do, maybe they don't. Like I said, this one was a couple years old now, almost two years old exactly. Um, and they I don't know if they've been doing any new runs on these lately or not. Um, but in any case, kind of sum it up. Good knife, high quality, well made, no QC issues whatsoever. This is definitely you know what I would expect from Medford. They're generally very, very good. Uh, this one happened to have a few issues that I wasn't too pleased with, but um, by and large, all of their knives, uh, they typically come, you know, they, they come dialed in and ready to go right out of the box. So no sort of QC issues. Um, it's one of those knives where if you like it and this, this fits and it's exactly what you're looking for, I would definitely recommend it. It's just one of those that, that with what they're currently offering, I, I struggle to see the relevance of this knife in their current lineup. So I don't know, maybe it'll be sunsetted at some point or discontinued altogether. Not sure. Um, but you know, definitely it's a quality piece, and um, if you're on the fence about buying one, but you think it checks a lot of boxes, I hope the, uh, you know, what I've had to say about it pushes you over and you go ahead and get it, because it's definitely good, and it's 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 worth your money if you, if you, uh, if you really like it. So that's going to be about it. Go ahead and um, subscribe if you can. If you haven't already, just go ahead and click that little that little subscribe icon. Give me a follow on Instagram, at Chuck underscore Nunface. Um, and, uh, stay tuned. Let me know in the comments what you think about, you know, this knife. Uh, do you agree with me about, you know, what I think about as far as it being relevant still, or, um, you know, do you have one? Do you wish you still had one? Did you move it along? Anything like that? Uh, go ahead and leave me a comment, like it and share it. I appreciate all that stuff. And, uh, yeah, stay tuned. We'll get some more stuff out to you. Thanks y'all.